Hey, what's poppin'? This your boy, Jay the Comedian. How y'all doing today? How am I doing? Oh, I feel great. I'm feeling spectacular. And today, I want to talk to you guys about apostasy. The Jehovah Witness version of apostasy, that is. <laughs> well, you see, the Jehovah Witnesses believe that an apostate is the worst thing in life to be. Now, personally, I disagree. I think the worst thing you could be is probably somebody who touched kids. But me and the governing body obviously disagree on that point. Because while they'll never forgive somebody who speaks negatively of the Holy Spirit, and in this scenario, they're the Holy Spirit, uh, somebody who touches kids can be forgiven. <laughs> Personally, I think that if we had a vote on which one was the worst, I think I'd probably win on that vote. Because uh, if you sit down and you say, you know, hey, uh, this person touched a kid, and they're like, oh, well, did he say something negative about the governing body while he did it? No then I can forgive them. <laughs> that, to me, doesn't hold much water or weight. You know what I'm saying? Like, that sounds a little crazy and beneficial to only themselves. If you, like, look at it through a lens of, like, logic and reasoning, you know what I'm saying? Because it's pretty much understood throughout society that you shouldn't do stuff like that to kids. You shouldn't. But they will defend and fight for any and everybody who's inside of their organization that they possibly could lose money for. <laughs> so they, they fight it, right? But this is the thing. When you say that being an apostate is the worst thing you can be, first off, you have to ask yourself, what is an apostate? And according to their definition, an apostate is a liar. Somebody who lies with the specific purpose of getting people to leave the organization with their horrible lies. So if you're not lying, then technically... You're not an apostate. Unless you want to change the definition. And you say, well, you tell uncomfortable truths <laughs> at inappropriate times. Then okay. I mean, I could probably see your apostate argument then. But what type of organization would be turned off and, like, be pushed away from the truth? I hope it isn't an organization named the truth. <laughs> I really hope that isn't it. Because being told an uncomfortable truth, I mean, okay, sometimes there is an inappropriate time to do it. Like if somebody was getting married and like right before they say their vows, you stand up and be like, hey, you know, one time he had the clap. <laughs> um, it might be the truth. It's definitely an uncomfortable truth, but you probably could have picked a better time to let everybody know that. Actually, I probably would have kept it to myself. <laughs> But the point is this, just because somebody tells an uncomfortable truth about people in your organization, that does not qualify them as an apostate. And it shouldn't. As long as somebody is telling the truth, even if it's their version of the truth, meaning that they believe it to be true, then you really can't call them an apostate. And once again, apostate or apostasy, according to Jehovah's Witnesses, is somebody who sins against the Holy Spirit of God. And once again, in this scenario, the governing body is God's Holy Spirit. Now, I don't remember the scripture in which they put that in the Bible, but uh, according to them, that is what it is. <laughs> but let's get back to the definition, because if they're saying that you're lying, right? Because a lot of times, they'll just straight say you're lying. They won't say you're telling an uncomfortable truth or anything like that because then their followers will have to digest it. And that's kind of hard to digest. Like, wait a minute. So he's telling the truth, but it's a truth that's not putting you guys in a good light. So apostate? Like, no, that's going to be too hard to swallow for their members. So what they tell their members to do is as soon as they hear something that's negative, shut their ears, close it off. It's a lie. Now, that is genius let's be honest okay <laughs> because that pretty much safeguards them against any and every form of attack that could possibly come against them as soon as you hear something negative ah apostate lie and you close your ears and you close your eyes and you stick your head in the sand <laughs> because one thing that i would probably suggest is if you're saying that this person is lying research it do unbiased research and find out whether or not they're lying and the problem comes in is if you do unbiased research, you open the door for two things. One, proving that it's a lie, or two, proving that it's the truth. 
And if that person is definitely telling the truth, then why is the organization lying? Why is the organization trying to cover it up and shut them up by calling them an apostate and doing all types of stuff like that? Why is that happening? Now, that's the question we need to find out. But only if you find out that they're telling the truth. They could be just telling them lies. You know them dirty apostates be lying. <laughs> but what I will never recommend is that you just take something that's the truth. Or, okay, just take something that you hear saying it's not the truth. Sticking your ears in your ears. Sticking your ears in your ears. Sticking your fingers in your ears and just running away. Because that is never how you get to the truth. And that is not how you defend the truth either. You find out what is the truth by doing your research. And then you can go on from there. Because if I just walk into a room, right, and I'm like, oh my God, smell like dookie up in here. Who just farted? And then one of y'all get up and say, you're a liar, and just storms out of the room. <laughs> that doesn't get to the truth, and chances are they were the one who pooed it. <laughs> but it's ways to get to the truth. We all know that. There are certain things that you can do to find out what's really going on. But the Jehovah Witnesses... They, they really handicap those means of doing that. They want you to only research stuff that they okay. Like they're not going to be biased. <laughs> they only want you to look at websites and, and, and talk to certain people that they say is okay to talk to. Like that's going to, you know, there's no bias there at all, right? Let's say this, for example, right? Let's say ever since you were a kid. Your parent walked in your room every morning and said, God wants me to punch you in the face every day. And he punches you in the face. Every day for, for your entire childhood, when you wake up in the morning, you got to get punched in the face. It's just, it's just the way it is, right? Eventually, <laughs> you're going to say, where in the Bible does it say that, right? Now, the Bible being the thing that it is, it could be misconstrued in a lot of different ways. Like, you can find a scripture possibly in which you can justify punching somebody in the face every day. But what you cannot do is defend it forever. Because once this person gets tired of getting punched in the face, they're going to not only look at what the Bible says, they're going to look at other information, they're going to talk to other people, they're going to get other ideas, they're going to have these conversations, they're going to bring in more information, more information, more information, and eventually they're going to realize Hey, you're not supposed to be punching me in my face every day. What the heck is wrong with you? I knew this wasn't right. <laughs> but they only get through that. They only get to that point by doing research. And this is the thing. This is why they consider apostate somebody they can never forgive. Because the simple fact, once you wake up, once you're no longer under that influence, once you're no longer getting punched in the face, there's no way that they're going to get you to come back to getting punched in the face. They can't convince you later. Like, hey, when are you going to come back to God? <laughs> Nobody's going to convince you to do that. You understand? Nobody is good enough to convince somebody to come back and be subjugated to the abuse and all the other horrible things that happen inside their organization. Once you wake up, you wake up for good. That's why I always find it funny that they say the apostates can trick you out of your relationship with God. Because you can only get tricked for a little bit of time. You can't be tricked forever. Like, I may, like, play a little game on you, like, ha huh, ha, huh. you see this card? You see this card? Watch this. Ha, huh, ha, huh, ha. Huh. Boom. It's disappeared. Ha, huh, ha, huh, ha. Huh. And then it comes back. You see, I might, I might have tricked you that time, but... Eventually, you're going to learn how it happened. I'm not going to tell you because a magician doesn't reveal his tricks. <laughs> but the point is, I can't trick you forever. If you want to do research and you want to figure out how I did that, you could. It's out there. It's not hard. And once you do find out, nobody could ever use that trick on you again. Right? But since I like to do the trick, let's do it again. <sighs> See the card? See the card? Oh, but I need to come back. Huh, huh, huh. Wow, look at that. It comes back. Jay the Magician too. <laughs> the Magician and the Comedian. But the point is that, of course, magic doesn't exist. And it was just a trick that I used to trick you. 
And once you find out what the trick was, it's not even that impressive anymore, you know? But it was fun showing you. <laughs> the point is this. Apostasy is basically people trying to tell you what they've been through. It's the Yelp review of the Jehovah Witness <laughs> organization. That's what it is. Any XJW who provides information about the organization, even, even if it's not positive, that doesn't mean that they're lying. It just means that they have a very, very interesting story to tell. And you need to listen to it and take it in and take in as much knowledge as possible so you can actually come to the truth. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, it's your boy, Jay the Comedian. I hope y'all having a great day. I'm having a great day. Holla, Chiguala. Deuces.